close as this game has been since it was 16 to 12. And we got five minutes to go for the title. Here's Hawkins. That's huge. How about that? The way he uses the screen. Hawkins right there for UConn. And the UConn Huskies wrap up one of the most dominant runs in NCAA tournament history. San Diego State did lead for a time in this game. They led a little bit at the beginning. They cut it to within five, cut it to within six a couple times. It was close for a while. It was an acceptable it was an acceptable championship at UConn. By far the best team in the country when it mattered the most. This is interesting to see. Daily Sports Podcast News Narrows takes gambling. Under the weather yesterday from this guy, my bad. I had a cold. Remember when I was complaining like a little baby? And then it went away, but then it didn't really go away and it became a bacterial infection. And now pfft, here I am. I actually have to go to the doctor for antibiotics, which is the most annoying thing of all time. So uh, yesterday was a bummer because I had a cool, bunch of cool stuff over the weekend. Of course, San Diego State with the buzzer beater. We had the Women's National Championship yesterday. And the debate, the real bummer about missing the show yesterday was this debate over classless or not, Angel Reese is this woman's name. She plays for LSU, and she went into Caitlin Clark's face, and she did the you can't see me thing that Caitlin Clark had been doing to people, and everyone's like, Dave Portnoy mostly, and some other people were calling it classless. So if you have seen it, the you can't see me thing is when you put your entire hand in front of your face like this. I'm doing it like this. You can see me if you're watching on Spotify or YouTube, watch on Spotify or YouTube if you want. Is it classless? Yes. Kind of. What she Is what she did classless? Yes. Is giving Caitlin Clark a taste of her own medicine classless? No. Here's the picture. Um, there's Caitlin Clark doing it and she does it to her. The, what was classless is that it didn't end here. Angel Reese just kind of like followed her around and kept doing it for like 20 seconds. As the, and this is as the clock is winding down, like the, the game is over. And LSU is celebrating. She's not celebrating with a teammate. She's talking shit to Caitlin Clark. That's what was classless. This is not classless. This is funny. It's, I mean, it's a little annoying, but it's also like, yeah, I mean, Caitlin Clark does that. Here's a picture of her doing it right up top. There she is. Um, but the more important question is, why, who cares about class? They won the national championship. Um, I would say that, like, it's not a great look. It looks like it, Angel Reese might be a bit of a douchebag. LSU beat Iowa 102 to 85, which is a big scoring, high scoring game for a women's college basketball game, of course. Angel Reese had 15 points and 10 rebounds. <sighs> Interestingly for me, though, uh, Caitlin Clark in this game, who is averaging 26 points a game, she had 30. And eight assists. So they lose by almost 20. And there were some bad calls and whatever, but that doesn't matter. But for Angel Reese, like, Kaylin Clark kind of fucked you up. <laughs> I mean, I, LSU is better than Iowa, but make no mistake about it. Your coach would rather have her than all of you. She's one of the best players of all time. So the real bummer for Angel Reese, and like the real thing about this is that she will never accomplish anything on a sports stage that will get her as much publicity as this has. This will be the thing that she's remembered for, which that's how it goes. Um, and for Caitlin Clark, she handled it. She took it. She didn't comment on it. That's what you do. You talk shit, you get hit. People talk shit back to you. And then for Angel Reese, like now people are talking about her as classless. I mean, it's a bummer for LSU that that's the story. Also, it's a bummer for Angel Reese because, again, like she'll never accomplish anything that gets her as much attention as this. I mean, women's college basketball hardly ever – gets into the mainstream media and this did and she'll never do anything that does i mean the last thing that was like the britney griner that's how it goes i mean that's how the internet works kind of a scary situation last night in san diego state there was a crush do you know what a crush is as i use the cough button there a crush is where there is a big stampede of people that are going in one direction and nobody can turn around and leave and they kind of get trampled um a stampede of people that run up against the wall there was a very famous crush that happened, I think, in the 80s in the Premier League. Like 170 people died. I think about a dozen people died at the crush at Astro World, which was the Travis Scott concert. And then, of course, last night we had kind of a trampling. I'm looking for details 
as to who was injured or whatnot. But I'll play the video for you um, in the background. I'm not going to, because there's a lot of screaming. Like, watch these people. These San Diego State fans are trying to get into Viejas Arena to watch the national championship, and it gets really scary. See, they're coming in through the gates, and Viejas Arena said, we're at capacity, we can't handle anything else, and the San Diego State fans want to come in. And they're just like, look at these people on the ground. They're just shoving their way through here. These guys, they're jumping. This guy's letting people in. Like, this is a fun college thing. Um, I imagine there would be investigations. No idea who was hurt. Some people were definitely hurt. And you can see that because the journalist recording this has a, she's a sports something for Daniela Ramirez recording this. She's a sports something for whatever the San Diego State student paper is. And that's where this reporting comes from. Look, they got through. Now they're running in, and the security's watching them. And these guys, there's just pure mayhem. And there's people like, the, there are a couple girls and, and women that have like been just smashed. Pretty scary situation. That people die doing this kind of shit. Like they die. It can be a very tragic situation. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on that. I don't know. No immediate reports. I didn't find anything on Twitter. Daniela Ramirez is the only person that reported on it. There were some local news stations that had some information, but nothing really. Nothing really crazy, so we shall see. Baseball season is in full swing. We'll forget about it by May. But for right now, let's watch some highlights. Bryce Turang, Turang, I don't know how he says his name, hit his first home run with his parents in the crowd. It's a grand slam. What's up? The last couple of years with the Marlins, and he mentioned his shoulder injury. Oh. Uh-oh. Bryce Turang, way Turang. back, and there she goes. Ten nothing Brewers in that one when he hit that home run. How about... We walk it off. Bottom of the ninth tie ball game. No one on. 3 1 count for the San Diego Padres. Kim to left. Back goes Kale. That's the ball game. Padres I love saw baseball Kim again. Walks it off. Padres love baseball again. They're looking good. Jalen Carter says he's not going to meet with any teams who are drafting outside the top 10. Good for you, champ. I guess. I don't know who cares. He's getting. People are not liking him. He's going to be an Eagle or he's going to be a Seahawk. Because other teams are not going to want him. Because if he was involved, there, apparently dash cam footage came out. Maybe we'll look into that for controversial Wednesday. His dash cam footage from when he was questioned after the, his teammate and trainer or a recruiting officer died from, from like street racing. So dash cam footage came out. It wasn't flattering, I guess. I don't know. Oh, we'll look at it. But he says he's not going to take... So they get, I don't know if it's 10 or 15 visits or each team gets to bring in 15 prospects to visit with them. He's not accepting visits from teams who are drafting outside the top 10. Cocky, annoying, but it's also a good way to kind of spin narratives and be like, yeah, we, we know we're going in the top 10. It comes off as either they know for sure they're going in the top 10 or they're posturing as if they're going to go in the top 10. I don't know. I think that it's a little bit of both. I think the teams are telling him they're going to, but they're not because they want to create hype. They know that he's not hes not seeing the chess game here, so he's going to tell people they're taking the top 10, so people want to ch- like jump up and trade him. The Baltimore Ravens have offered Odell Beckham Jr. a contract. Odell Beckham Jr. coming off a torn ACL in the Super Bowl, did not play last year. Reports came out that he wanted more than $20 million a year. He laughed at those, but now it comes out he wants more than $15 million a year. I don't know. It's kind of a lot. We shall see. The Phoenix Suns. Since acquiring Kevin Durant, have not lost a ball game since he's been playing in the games. Like 6-0, and I think. Maybe 7-0. and Kyrie Irving, on the other hand, has the Mavericks four games worse off than when he found them. To the surprise of no one. That is, I don't say it's the most predictable thing ever, but it is perhaps the most predictable thing ever. Over the weekend, the NBA signed a new collective bargaining agreement. They want to address load management to win the MVP. One must play 65 games a year. There will also be an in-season tournament that counts for something. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. They're trying to incentivize an in-season tournament. No one's going to care. You can't recreate shit. Stop it. The only way this works is like to have a Champions League and things. More players. Steve Kerr on whether or not load management is going to be addressed. Let's see. As it relates to the 82 games, I know I've said this multiple times, but um, we, as a league, we kind of want our cake and we want to eat it too. You know, we want 82 games and we want all of our players to play every game. And um, it just isn't going to work that way, not with all the information we have. And, and So he's saying rest is good. I'm not playing my players 82 games. And he is, of course, the head coach of your Golden State Warriors. So, yeah, I mean, like, look, 
rest is good. There are too many games. He's not fucking playing his guys. I don't know. Like, I bought a ticket to see Steph. Well, it fucking sucks to suck. Like, they're not doing it. There are too many games. There are too many. Basketball is hard. There's a lot of running. The floor does not have give. It's the same thing with the NFL trying to flex Thursday night football and, and with trying to add games. Like, they are going to start sitting guys for rest. And the NBA has 82 games. If you're the Warriors, it doesn't make a shit if you get the fourth seed or the five seed or the three seed at all. And the analytics have proven that home, home field and home court advantage doesn't fucking matter. Of course, those teams do better. They are actually factually better. What they're finding out is just getting into the playoffs is more important. Being managing the amount of work you have leaves more in the tank for when it matters. Like This is going to get worse. Part of it, there are too many NBA teams and there are too many games. So the CBA did not address it like, oh, well, to win an award, you have to get 65. There are like five awards. There's only one MVP. So like for Steph Curry, like he knows he's not going to win MVP. Who cares? The Warriors only need him to play like 60 games. And if they win 40 of those, they're probably going to the playoffs with the other games that they're going to win. Who gives a shit? Yeah, so this load management thing is not going anywhere. It's going to be part of, of, of basketball for a while. It makes the players look soft, but it also makes them look smart at the same time. I bet that happens quite a bit. Sometimes smart and soft getting convoluted. That kind of actually... The more I think about it, that seems like a thing that happens kind of a lot. By being smart, one seems soft. But you're smart. The goal is to win. The goal is to make money. What is Steph? I know that some kid in Cleveland paid money, but he, what does he care? He has a job. It's tough, man. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Plus, like, ticket prices don't. They make money on TV. They, want you, they don't want you to come to the game. They want you to watch, buy shit and watch on TV. Masters odds are out. I will give you the top four, five. I'll give you the top. No, nope, give you the top three just because those are the people with the best odds by far. Scotty Scheffler, Rory, Rack, Rory McLemore. Just kidding. Rory McElroy and John Brom. They have by far the best odds. Uh, Scotty and Rory are close with John at plus 950. I wouldn't bet on anybody that's under plus 2,000, which, like, why? You know, might as well have fun. Uh, Max Homa, I think, would be a good bet at plus 3,200. He's got, he's the eye of the internet. The internet people really like him a lot. Dustin Johnson would be smart. I like Colin Marikawa. Um, Marikawa won in 2020, right? I think I remember that right. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama. Tom Fleetwood. Yeah, I don't know anything about golf, but bet for some, bet somebody in the middle. Maybe Will Zalatoris plus 4,400. He's, Betting on the favorite in golf seems just so boring. Just do it. Take a guess. Masters starts on Thursday during the day, I believe. Today is the, I think today's like the kids' day, the caddies' day, where they try to, the pros will try to skip a ball over the water into, onto the green instead of trying to hit the green. I think they play with kids and caddies play today. It's a fun day on the internet. A lot of clips will come out of it. All right, back and better than ever tomorrow.